All right, in this video, we're going to go over more on functions and their graphs. All right, to start this video, we're going to start about increasing, decreasing, or constant functions. So now, here we have the graph of a function, and this is our actual function, 3x squared minus x cubed. All right, now, in order to tell if a function is increasing, decreasing, or constant, is imagine yourself walking along this graph, okay? What is your altitude doing as you walk toward the y-axis here? Your altitude is decreasing, right? Since, since your altitude is decreasing, that means that your graph is also decreasing on the same interval that, that your altitude is decreasing as you walk. So this graph goes on and on forever in both directions. So it comes from negative infinity because remember, we're using the x values for this, not the y values. So as the x values go to the left, of course, they are negative. So we come from negative infinity. And when we get to right here, we're, not, we're neither increasing nor decreasing, right? We're actually changing um, from decreasing to increasing. So which means we can't include the 0 in our interval. Remember. Uh, parenthesis is does not include, a bracket is does include, and you can't include negative infinity because of course it's not really a number it, and you can't actually get there. So there's one interval that this graph is decreasing from negative infinity to zero. Then if you were here and you started to walk back up, of course your altitude would be increasing. All right. Since your altitude is increasing, your function or your graph is also increasing, and it starts at zero, and then it goes to positive two is where it stops. Oops, positive two, not negative two. This is where it stops increasing because now we're going back to decreasing. All right, so we're going back to decreasing from two to positive infinity because again, these intervals are based on your x values not your y values. All right. So again, just imagine yourself walking along the graph. If your elevation is decreasing, the whole th you, your your uh, graph is decreasing. If if your elevation is increasing, your graph is increasing. If your elevation is not changing, then it is constant. All right. Here, I want you to do this one. I want you to figure out the intervals where it's increasing, decreasing, or constant. So go ahead and pause the video and figure this out. All right, so again, just imagine you're walking along the graph. Our elevation is decreasing. So, and of course, this goes on and on forever. So we're coming from negative infinity because again, it's our x values. And when we get to x equals negative one, it stops decreasing because then it changes. See how, because it has that little point there, so it changes. So we're decreasing from negative infinity to negative one. Now, if you look, between 1 and 1, it's just a horizontal line. If you were walking along that, you wouldn't be walking up or downhill. So from negative 1 to 1, it is constant. And then, of course, from 1 to then positive infinity, it is increasing because if you were to be walking, you'd be walking uphill. All right? So that's increasing, decreasing, and constant based on a graph. Now, relative maxima and relative minima. Now, these are the, the long, complicated, boring definitions. Um, I'll simplify this for you in just a second. A relative maxima, a function value f of a is a relative maximum of f if there exists an open interval containing a such that f of a is greater than f of x for all x not equal a in the open interval. Relative minima, a function value f of b is a relative minimum of f if there exists an open interval containing b such that f of b is less than f of x for all x not equal to b in the open interval. Now, what does that mean in uh, layman's terms? Basically this. If we look at this function at f of 2, this point at f of 2 is higher than any other point to the left or to the right in this local area right here, right? 
Like if we did, let's say we did 1.5, all right, it would be there. Well, that's lower than 2. If we did 2.5, it would be about there. That's also lower. So basically what this is saying is this, he, this is greater at f of 2. The value of the graph is greater than any value um, immediately to the left or immediately to the right. Since that is the case, this is called a relative maximum. Okay, it's a relative maximum because it's greater than f of 1.5 and it's greater than f, whoops, did that the wrong way, and it's greater than f of 2.5. It's also greater than f of 1 and f of 3. You know. So any, any numbers on this interval around f of 2, it's going to be greater than all of them, so it's a relative max. Now, relative min works the same way. All right, if you look here at f of 0, you'll see that immediately to the left and to the right, this is lower than any value to the left or any value to the right in, the, in, the, in this area. All right? Obviously, this goes a lot lower, but, we're, but it's relative, or it's also called a local relative or local max. So you're containing it to an area. You're not really looking over the entire graph. This graph actually doesn't have an absolute, what's called an absolute minimum or maximum because these go on forever but it does have a relative max and minimum all right so again f of zero here would be less than say f of negative 0.5 because see that's has a higher y value or f of 0.5 also has a y, higher y value and so f of zero less than f of 0 0.5 that's a less than sign all right, so that's what, a re that's, how you, that's what a relative max and relative minimum is. And that is what these definitions say. You just find a point that's higher than the ones around it, that's a relative max. Find a point that's lower than the ones around it, that's a relative min. That's all these are saying right here. All right, moving on. Even and odd functions. Even functions. A function is even if f of x equals f of negative x for all x and even functions are also symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Odd functions. A function is odd if f of negative x equals negative f of x for all x. Odd functions are also symmetric with respect to the origin. All right, so <clears throat> even functions. Okay, The easiest even function is f of x equals x squared. All right, Because what this is saying is if we take and we put in a, a negative x, all right, we evaluate the same function but now at negative x, we're going to get negative x quantity squared, which just equals x squared. All right, in this case, f of x equals f of negative x. So that means it's an even function. All right, if we were to put numbers in here, say we use this same function but we did say f of 3, that would give us 9. We did f of negative 3, that would also give us 9, so therefore even. All right, when you change, when you put in the opposite value, remember opposite, you just change the sign. When you put in the opposite value, you get the same thing out, it's even. You can think even, equal. Because 9 is equal to 9, and you use the same function, opposite inputs, therefore it's even. Odd functions. The easiest odd function to look at is actually f of x equals x, but we're going to do x cubed. All right? If we put in an f of negative x with the same function, we're going to get negative x cubed, which is technically negative x, negative x, negative x. All right? So we know we're going to have x cubed because we have three x's multiplied by each other. But if you notice, the negative times negative is positive times negative is negative. So, when we change, when we put in the opposite value for x, we get out negative f of x. All right? So, negative x cubed is the negative version of x cubed. In a sense, what we're doing is we're taking f of x, multiplying it by negative 1. Okay? You get the exact opposite out. 
In fact, I can do negative 1 times x cubed, and there's my f of x. So essentially, this is just negative 1 times our original f of x. All right. All right, let's look at a problem here. We're going to determine if it's even, odd, or neither. Let's do x squared plus 2x uh, minus 1. All right, let's put in a negative x. So negative x squared, well, we know from the previous example, we know that x squared is an even function. All right, so we know if we change the the x to negative x, we're going to still get out x squared. Now this is going to be a positive 2 times negative x and then minus 1. So x squared, negative, positive times negative is negative 2x minus 1. So this is f of negative x. All right. So if we look, is this the exact opposite of this? Well, every, all three of these signs should change. Well, x squared, x squared, it doesn't change. So that means it's not even, all right? Positive, I mean, that, mean, that means it could be even, sorry. And then positive 2x, negative 2x, well, that one changes. We don't even have to look at the 1 since, since the x squared did not change and the 2x, the sign, did change. That means this function is neither even nor odd, all right? So that's how you figure out even and odd functions. If it asks, is this function even, odd, or neither, just substitute in a negative x, and I'll actually do that over here. So you have negative x squared plus 2 times negative x minus 1. And then you just simply simplify it down as far as you can. And if you don't come out with the same exact thing, it's not even. If you don't come out with the same, the original function times negative 1, it's not odd, so therefore, if it's not even nor odd, it is neither. All right? Now, remember how earlier I said that even functions are symmetric with respect to the y, odd functions are symmetric with respect to the origin? Here's what I mean by that. This here is simply the function f of x equals x squared. We know from earlier that this is an even function. And if you notice, of course, this is your y-axis. I know you all know that. All right. If this dotted line were a mirror, all right, this side mirrors this side perfectly. So therefore, this has y-axis symmetry. So therefore, it is an even function. All right. Since it's symmetric about the y, it's an even function. Just imagine a mirror. Does it, does, is, is this side a mirror, a mirror image of this side? If it is, it's even. All right. Now this function. This is simply the function y equals x cubed. We Again, we know from earlier that this is an odd function. And we know that odd functions are symmetric with respect to the origin. Well, here's your origin. Basically, if we were to cut this graph through the origin and we rotated this around, it would look exactly like this. All right. So since rotating the quadrant 1 around the origin into quadrant 3, you have the same exact picture, that is that has um, symmetric to the origin, so origin symmetry, and any graph that is symmetric around the origin is odd. Even if we didn't know the function, say we did not know that this was the graph of f of x equals x cubed, the fact that it is symmetric around the origin tells us that it is odd. All right? We don't have to know the actual function to determine whether it is even or odd. We can go just based on the graph. All right? So that's the end of this video. Make sure you understand the concepts. You can watch it as many times as you need to. See you tomorrow.